God bless you. This is Rosemary Santiago from On Wings of an Eagle. Today's uh, theme is tracing the enemy's steps. Tracing the enemy's steps. Let's begin this program with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, Lord, for this opportunity, Father, that you have allowed certain things to take place, Lord. So people are paying attention, Lord. My, my, my heart desires, Lord, that people will take time out and start reflecting, a reflex, reflection of their life, introspection, Lord, that they may give their heart to you because we are for the church where we have to be in the end times. Everything else that happens, Lord, afterwards, those are the ones that are going to stay behind, unfortunately, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you may prepare the hearing, prepare those spiritual ears, and clear the minds that they may receive your word today. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Question, what are we up against? Let's see what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And it says, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I'm going to read the three well, that I have. Then we'll go into the definitions because there are some uh, things that are uh, that have to be read. That is very important that you get the true definition so you can appreciate what God is really speaking about. Let's look at Ephesians two two. And it says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And now in the same uh, uh, epistle to the Ephesians, we have uh, chapter 6, verse 12, and it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So I have uh, the breakdown We'll go scripture by scripture so we don't, right? Okay. So I looked up lowercase g, God. That's uh, 2316. It's theos. It means the general name of deities. Okay. It says, has blinded. The word is to flow. It means to blunt the mental discernment, to darken the mind, to obscure. And out of that, um, the word no, noema, it means the unbelieving. And the word apistos, without trust in God. That's what happens when What's in operation is Satan, the demons, and the unclean spirits. Now, for Ephesians 2.2, 2, the word is archon. It means a ruler, commander, chief, leader, first in rank and power. That's where it says the prince of the air. And then in uh, chapter... 12, excuse me, chapter 6, verse 12, where it speaks of 
principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The word of the power, power of rule or government, um, the air, the word, oh, excuse me, the word is exousia. Um, air is aer, it means atmospheric region, second heaven. So we have earth, second heaven, third heaven, where uh, God and the angels are. It says something very important where it says now, um, at this time, the present, when he was talking about at this time, at present, can you imagine if he's talking in that kind of mentality, how it must be now? The word is working. Energeo, it means to display activity. They're definitely working because it's a lot of deception, a lot of things that um, even people that don't have a relationship with God, but have a sense of morality, they're being bothered by all the things that they are hearing. Um, let me go back to two, where it says, okay, sons of, the word is huilus, means descendants, descendants of disobedience. That means if you go and uh, uh, read the uh, interaction that the Lord had with the Pharisees, he always makes reference. You are descendants. You are like your fathers. And they're talking about forefathers from the very beginning when they did not want to listen to the prophets. So imagine if they don't listen to the ones that they see, they are less likely to listen to the one that they don't see. And because you and I don't see him doesn't mean that he, does, that, that he doesn't have a body. The word disobedience, the word is apaititaya. It's obstinate to the divine will. How many people are fighting God? They're not fighting everything that is evil. They are fighting God because the flesh, the flesh desires. And then you have these spirits that are willing to carry you through your desires. Okay. In Ephesians 6, 12, we have the word, we wrestle not, and it might vary in, in different uh, uh, versions. The word uh, struggle, wrestle, and I found something very, very interesting. Me, I don't know anything about wrestling, but when I looked at that, where it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I looked at the word struggle or wrestle, and the word is pale, and it means, and it's describing a wrestling match. It says, as in wrestling, when the victor is able to hold down his opponent, with his hand upon his neck. And then I looked up some information and it sounded more like, like I said, I'm, I don't know anything about wrestling. I have Nelson. And I said, well, that's very interesting. Now the word against is pros. Even though we use, uh, we say, you know, for, we are pro something, but here it means to the advantage. And then principalities, arche, first place, the person or a thing that commences like of angels and, and demons. That's the one that has dominion. You notice that 
Every one of them has a different rank. Powers, exousia of ex excessi. It means the abilities of strongholds, potentates. Okay. The word world. The word has a root word is Crateo, the root word, which means to lay hold of someone or something under its power. So it's actually telling you the rulers of this world, you think you're making your own choices. But see, if you don't give your will up to God so that he can guide you through his Holy Spirit, you're actually being dominated and manipulated by the powers of this world. And it says, uh, the word is cosmocrater, means the governors. There are governors of this world. And I saw something very interesting in Daniel chapter 10. And even though we're talking about... Uh, Princes here, governors here, uh, presidents and all of that. While we have these uh, positions here on earth, they have unclean spirits, demons that work with them. And here's the proof. This is when Daniel was praying and he wanted to know. He says, now I know that Jeremiah the prophet was saying that it was supposed to end 70 years and then uh, the, the people of Israel would, would then uh, be let loose and they would be able to, uh, to uh, you know, to go back to where they were. It was God's promise. God made them go through all these different uh, changes. Okay, so what happens is that when when... Nebuchadnezzar was supposed to, or his governing, because there were three people that governed within Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, a son and grandson. And um, as soon as, in fact, in the dream of the image, he sees the, the head is of gold. And when he gets the interpretation, he is told that he is that head of gold, but that then comes an inferior governing, which would be here to here. And one in, in, in one of the beasts, it shows it as a beast with a lifted one. Then we know that D Darius uh, was under uh, Cyrus, who was the one that really dominated that 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 area so look at what happens here okay let's see here's his conversation with with um with the messenger gabriel it says in the third year of cyrus king of persia a, thi a thing was revealed unto daniel whose name was called belshazzar they had a habit of naming their gods, uh, people after their gods. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three weeks. Now he's wondering, he's in a fasting, and he wants to know what's going down. And he notices a day passes by two days, all those three weeks and nothing so all of a sudden, it says, And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. He, he, he described it as that because that was supposed to be the best process gold so he's all duded up it's an angel so he says um the angel tells him here 
in uh, verse 12 down, it says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Sometimes you be praying for something, you be fasting for something you don't get right away, but there's a spiritual warfare and you have to be constant. You have to believe. Wait. Believe. It says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So that demon spirit that manifests himself, okay, was given a hard time. And that's why the blessing wouldn't come down. So we know that we are not fighting really against the people, even though sometimes, sometimes, most of the times, they let themselves be used by the unclean spirit. How many times have you seen in a uh, video where a person said, but I heard a voice and he told me to kill my wife and kill my children because since they, that person was not connected to the things of God. God could not interfere in such a way because that person did not belong on this side of the Lord. He will help in many ways, but if you're not listening to the voice, he has to say, well, you belong on that side. You got out of my umbrella. There's no protection. And I'm a gentleman. I will not interfere. I will work things out later, but I cannot interfere because you forfeit it. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They're always blaming God for, for their uh, uh, bad decisions. Okay. So now, um, then I looked up of darkness, the word is skotos or skotos, of darkened eyesight, spiritual blindness of things. So you have Ephesians 4, 17 to 18 and see what it says. It says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Remember everything, the soul, when they say heart, it's not here. Even though we feel certain uh, uh, things that are really emotions, not unclean spirits, because there's a lot of things that we believe that they are um, uh, emotions and they're actually unclean spirits with the name of the things that people are going through. Then it says spiritual wickedness. I looked under also this and it says, um, not only that, the spiritual blindness of things, it says, and human duties and the accompanying of ungodliness and immorality immorality. How do you know that people are not in the things of God? By the things that they do. Their own works, their actions manifest if they are serving God or serving the God of this world. The word spiritual wickedness, spiritual forces, poneria means depravity, malice, iniquity, evil purposes, and desire. And there's a root word, pon, poneros, means bringing peril, evil, wicked, bad. So they, these unclean spirits are bringing wickedness. God does not bring wickedness. God has to allow certain things to take place because of man's uh, hard-headed thinking, his mindset. 
Okay, and it says in high places. And the other word, the other word they use is heavenly. So the word is um, epu, epuranios, is of heavenly origin. That is, demons are products of the fallen angels. We don't, they are disembodied. That's the reason why in one of the chapters uh, where we have uh, uh, the Gadarenes and the demon uh, called uh, Legion. And he says, I'm called Legion because we are many. And they ask to occupy the bodies of the pigs. Okay. They need a dwelling place. Okay. All right. We are going to see how things began. Uh, I think I have mentioned a couple of times. I'm going to repeat it again. When the Lord spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he made reference when he would say to them, you are like your father, the devil. Okay, because he could read their minds. He knew what was in their heart. He was not at all far from the truth because he is the truth, the, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no man, no woman, no child, nobody comes to the Father if it's not through him. And we are celebrating Passover, and he's the Passover lamb. Yeshua is the Messiah. Okay. Let's see the origin. Let's start it uh, uh, so that you could understand. So why I spoke about, you know, uh, you're like your father or the devil, because you're going to find that, um, that in the word of God in Isaiah chapter 14, even though he's making reference to um, the, the Babylonian king, then he gets to the nitty gritty and he starts explaining who he really is making reference to. So that, that is whichever way, your way of thinking, the way you act, the way you live, the way you carry on determines who is your father. And I'm not talking about earthly father. I'm talking about God. You have the minor case. And, you know, or the lower case, and you have the only case, which is God himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'm going to start with verse 11, because here is where, why he compares him. Uh, he had all access of so many things, right? So he says, thy pomp, that's when you, you know, like the turkey and the, and the peacock, they have a tendency to kind of, you know, they blow up with pride. It says, thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. And he's talking about something a lot more deeper. And you're going to see where it falls perfectly. By the way, his name was not Lucifer. Lucifer is just uh, the, the name given in the uh, Latin Vulgate because that was not his name. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven? It says, O Lucifer. That's a Vulgate uh, translation. The name is Hallel. It means brightness, star. The root word is Hallel. And it means to shine. Lucifer is Latin for light bringing found in the Latin Vulgate. I search all my stuff. Plus in the concordance, it tells you everything. Uh, I, pronounce it, uh, I pronounce it as exegesis. And some people say exegesis. Whatever suits you is fine with me. I do not fight the, uh, the way... To pronounce, just look for it. Uh, the Blue Letter Bible is about the best 
instrument, uh, sure instrument. It has references also by uh, Strong's. You have uh, the lexicon. You have all this kind of stuff. It's goody goody. It's the best that I. It has been a blessing to my life. Okay. So it says, "How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven." I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He's not talking about the, those kind of stars up there. He's talking about the angels. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Yeah, he got a north side, but it's not where God is. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay. The word. I. Where is it here? I will ascend. The word given is Allah. You heard right. I will ascend. The word is Allah. And I'm more than sure people have heard that name before, right? Okay, let's go to Ezekiel. See, um, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And it's all written in here. And he has allowed it to be written in all languages. And I don't know, if you look into the uh, that blue letter Bible, you will see the different uh, versions. And, and it's very, very clear. When you want to make sure that they did not leave out the essence of what is being said. We have to be careful, especially in these times. They want to make uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit women. And it says, He... He, that's what it says. It doesn't say she, because everything's going back to the very beginning. And you'll see why in a few minutes. I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as I can, because it's a lot of material. This takes a lot of investigation to make sure that we do not sin against the Holy Spirit who inspired the book from Genesis to Revelation. And that we do not confuse anyone. It says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day Thou was created in him. So it can't be uh, the, uh, the uh, king of, of Tyre because God wouldn't put no instrument sounding for his uh, worship in a person. He can give you vo vocal cords and you could sound out with awesome uh, uh, breathing. Your, your voice can project, but... You and I don't have music on the inside, prepared instruments, no. This was actually Halel. It said, Thou art the anointed cherub. See? Cherub type of uh, uh, being. That covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. And it goes on. Whoever wants to read it, Ezekiel chapter 28. I investigate everything that I'm reading. I am a reader of the word of God. I love the word of God. 
and it opens up the mind so that there will be no deceiving in these end times. But let me tell you, deception is in all kinds of sizes, colors, whatever. There's one deception for every type of person and mindset. We have to be very careful in these times. And the word of God has to be preached exactly the way the Lord said on the lips of his chosen people. Okay. Quickly, Revelations. There's a two part in Revelation. I won't read the last part because the last part has to do, and it's in, in the same chapter, but one is where he literally, he and the, uh, the, the angels that rebelled with him were casted out of heaven into second heaven. We can't mix it up with where there's a woe in chapter 12 because Satan will come down. He, excuse me, he will be given dominion then in the great tribulation. Okay. It says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, that's after, and his angels were cast out with him. I'm going to read 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And there's going to be a woe. For, for, you know, whoever has to put up. Now we're going to go backwards. We're going to go to Genesis. Because you have to understand that after that kicking out from heaven. Excuse me a second. He started, uh, started to observe. Because you know how God told Adam, you're going to be Lord. You're going to be able to, to submit subject, you know, uh, I have put you uh, as dominion over all these things that I have created for you. Why would God need to create that? He wasn't going to create it for the devil. He wasn't going to create it for, for, for just for the animals to roam around. He's got his own kingdom. So it was made for man. There was a very big purpose. And even though uh, uh, God knew he had to prove to those who were up there that were faithful. Prove. They have to see where he is going to go next. What is What are his plans? So we have in 315. And here is the reason why there's going to be so much more chaos. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now let's go to uh, chapter 6 of Genesis. And we will consider 4. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, a lot of things are, are coming out in these times. I've always, I, I have this thing when I speak to the Father, and I say, you know, I, I'm very angry with the church, because there are books from way back, these brothers knew the truth and they held it back and then the world just had fun over that because then they started hiding all these kind of evidences. But guess what? The word of God says that there's nothing kept in secret. 
that he would bring light. He puts the light over every lie and exposes it. So let's read Jude verse 6. Jude only has one chapter and it's almost towards the end, right before Revelation. It would have to be. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are very, very, very important. Jude verse 6. Yes. Oh, no wonder. Okay. Here. I'll read uh, 4, 4 to 6. It says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And boy, are we in these times, right? I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains of the darkness, into the judgment of the great day. So I looked at the word because I'm very I'm very curious about everything. I looked at the word in this is this is in the New Testament. So we look on the area of the New Testament in the concordance. So I looked up habitation. Every verse that came out with habitation, what it really means. So as I went in um, those uh, were uh, structural dwelling places, but there are those that are different. Look at this, Acts 120, 1886, the word is apolis, it means homestead. 2730, katoikeo, it means dwell. 1726 is katoikia, to give dwelling. Then Revelation 18.2, katoiketeron. Keteria, it means dwelling place. Now the only two that actually meant body, habitation as body, was Ephesians 2.22. I'll show you. I like to, to read it so, so people can write it down. 2.22, okay. Okay, here's Paul speaking to the Ephesians. Let me see if I can read it a little before so you can get the idea. Um, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers. That's uh, uh, verse 19 in chapter 2. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizen with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In other words, we have the prophets here. All the information is here from Old Testament to new. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In other words, he's making reference to we are a body. We are like an edifice. There are, right, certain structures. It says, in whom ye are also are builded together, built, for a habitation of God through the Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. That's, that's the, the house, the habitation he's talking about. Now, in, in, uh, in Jude, these words is oiketorion or oiketoria and dwelling place katoi keteria is like saying the body. You hold your spirit. Well, their dwelling place was inside, like our dwelling place. This is, this is here. 
This is where we dwell. We have a body and also the Lord dwells within us, but we have a spirit and we have a soul. So they gave that up to have sexual intercourse with women and they gave forth the mighty men. That's why there were, let me go back to Genesis chapter six, four. I like, I like reading. There were giants in the earth in those days. They're letting you know heavy. He had the, the capacity of kind of repeating the same thing. You would read chapter one of Genesis. And again, when you go into chapter two, it's more precise. So he says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, well, we know for a fact that there were, because during the time of David, there were giants and there were descendants also after that because the people uh, were, were mixed. Remember, giants are supposed to be gigantic and we have the proof now because they can't hide it anymore. Smithsonian Institute cannot hide the bones. This is the time of the awakening, not only for the church, but for everybody else. And they have proof. And there are some bone structures that are so big they look like buildings. That's how high they are. That is the truth that was being hidden. It should never have been hidden. And now because of the falling of those angels, because they took on, they weren't supposed to, they weren't made to, uh, uh, to how would you say, to produce children in anybody. They had their heavenly place. So when they went into that swearing, they did. He didn't want to go by himself. So everybody else says, well, hey, you know, you're a friend of mine. Why not? Humans do that. And they don't want to have it uh, uh, only on the responsibility on one. They all got into it. But now they are reserved. And like I said, God always leaves Proof, And the proof was the brother of Cousteau, who just happened to go. He wanted to uh, find a particular evidence of something. That's also in, in internet. You can, you can find that out for yourself. And um, when he went down, uh, there was a vortex. And this thing impeded him to get to where he wanted to go. But he heard moaning and groaning and chains. When he came up, he says, I don't want to finish this expedition. And the pastor that went with him said, tell me, tell me what happened. And he said, this is what I heard. So God will always leave proof. Um, this is... Uh, showing God's sovereignty over Satan, the demons, the unclean spirits, uh, disobedient generation, you know, the rebellious. God is supreme. <laughs> and I just love those things. Okay, so we have the... Uh, the uh, the story of uh, when Joseph and the family, that's in uh, Exodus 1, 8 to 12 and verse 22. We have the problem where a new Pharaoh comes in. It really says, well, you know, he didn't know who, who Joseph was. And he started seeing the, the amount of, you know, the, 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 the population. And these, these people are growing all over the place. And he says, hey, you know, in one of those, they grow so much. They might go against our enemies. Um, it, it, they might go with our enemies against us. So let's get rid of it. Why? Was it necessary for this to happen? The Lord had promised in Genesis a seed. We had already the rebellion of Satan and the and and the and the uh, the uh, the angels. Then we have the the issue of the angels and the demons, the the disembodied children of this mixture. 
And now they say, whoa, we got to stop this. So uh, Pharaoh decides that he's going to say, no, you know, we, we're going to get, we're going to get rid of, of, of these people. Yeah, let me look at, at this and read it. Because I can rattle off like nothing without looking at it. I have the, I have the audible uh, Bible all the time. Okay. Um, the 8 to 12. It says, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. First he wants to give them all this burden. Then, then he decides to do this. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. That was his intention. Let's see what was God's intention. Let me see if I have this. I might, I might uh, uh, continue this some other time. But here, we have in Jeremiah the prophecy. Because I only have a, a couple of minutes. And this is something that should take over an hour easy. Jeremiah 31.15. That's when he prophesizes what's going to happen in the future. 31.15. Refuse to be comforted for her children because they were not. Now we'll see Matthew 2.16. Matthew. Because now we know the birth of the Lord. Okay. 2, 16, 18. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by, over here they call him Jeremy, that's my grandson's uh, uh, name, the prophet saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel, weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. And I'm going to give uh, something very interesting that I found at the very end. Um, the idea is that they were trying to uh, stop the lineage where the Messiah was supposed to come. Then you have a whole bunch of these uh, a proof, and they really want to get down. They really want to impede. They really want to stop this. So Isaiah 7, 14, 9, 6, 11, 1. Then we have Jer uh, Jeremiah 23, 5, Ezekiel 2, 9, um, 9, 9, 12, 10, Zechariah 13, 6. All these prophecies that were being told were driving these these unclean spirits and the demons, they wanted revenge. But look what it says in 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 6 to 8. Howbeit how we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Between our world, their world is eternal. They had already had things going on issues within themselves they rebel and then afterwards we have the the uh the uh, the fall of the other angels it says which none of the princes of this world because every nation has a prince has a a a, a, a prince 
in God's kingdom because they're fighting over that nation. Who is going to be the, we all know who's going to win at the very end. That's almost a joke. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> um, we, we sing a song in, in Spanish, and it has to do with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So that must have been like when the Lord... Uh, resurrected, and it said that he went to the captives. The captives, you know, there used to be a gulf. The bosom of Abraham is how it is referred to in the, in the word of God. These were the people and the very blessed thief on the other side of the Lord that said, Remember me. So you know that after the Lord gave his spirit, he conquered death. He took the keys of death. That man that said, remember me, when he died, because they had to break every bone in their body for them to die. But the Lord was the only one that was crucified in a different way. That's how the father, the father plays the rules. He's the one that dictates how things are going to be done. And by the way, for a lot of people think, you know, that, oh, they killed him. No, he gave his life. He had the power to take it back. That's why he said, I give my spirit because there was no sin in him. And he was perfect. And sin had no dominion to keep him down dead. That's why he's the only one. That's what we celebrate, the memory of it. That's why people don't understand why Christians are, but, but, but they crucified your, your, your so-called God, like they say. Yeah, but he's the only one whose who's, uh, um, grave is unoccupied. Everybody else's bones. They're going to be for the time of, of when the Lord calls the dead. This is awesome. That's why we sing what we sing. Because death has no victory. And that must have really battled. And I love Passion of Christ. i tell you why. Because this man picked something that makes it logical. Because when, when they show the blood and the so-called, I, I assume it's supposed to be like the tear of the father. Because he had to turn away sin. He was carrying all our sin from beginning to end. All our sin. It shows how Satan just went into almost like a, 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 a convulsion. Because he understood, and all the unclean spirits understood, that what was in the mind to bring forth was the very thing that was crushed. Because the Lord could not be kept down there. He was free because he is holy. And he see only one it says that we cannot come to the father if it's not through him take this time of uh, reflecting look into the scriptures 
There's so many things that points to the Lord Jesus Christ. We call him Jesus Christ because that's the, the New Testament. His real name is Yeshua because he saves. And every time you look, even in the Old Testament, when you look into the concordance and you look at the word salvation, it says Yeshua. So I want to invite you. I have exactly five minutes. I'm going to cut this short. You know your condition. God knows your condition. Maybe your mother, your father, your sister, brother, whomever, your pastor, whomever. But you know. And you got to live with that. You can easily give it over to the Lord. The Lord can help you. This has been a time of reflection. God purposely also allowed certain things made by man to take time out to be with your family and think. So I'm going to invite you for you to be honest with yourself. Be honest. You know how you're living. You know your condition. You know you need to repent. And it's something so simple. Just follow these words. God, I have sinned against you. I have lived a terrible life. I have done so many things. I can make a list of the things that I have done. But she says that you are a forgiving God. And I come to you and I ask for forgiveness. And I ask that your Holy Spirit show me the truth. Walk with me so I can understand these things. I accept the sin sacrifice of your son. He washes me of all my sins. Satan is a liar. He keeps telling me that I can't be saved. But I know I can because you say so in your word. I ask you also to put my name in the book of life. Help me. Help me daily. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I give you thanks, Lord. I give you thanks. This has been such a, a struggling week for, for so many people, Lord. We try to get in, Lord, in uh, the comments. We pray. We, 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 we try to be one, Lord. We have been more than blessed. We don't have uh, these things, Lord. We are not going through these things. But we have to feel, Lord. We have to pray. We have to give them encouragement. We have to let them know, Lord, that you're a healing God. That's what it says in Isaiah 53.5, Lord. I ask you in Jesus' mighty name, bless them spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, and socially. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This has been Rosemary Santiago from On Wings of an Eagle. Do yourself the biggest favor in the world. Get yourself close to God. Ask him to lead you to the church that will teach you out of this book from Genesis to Revelation. God bless you.